Hello guys, this is Sean Kwon from South Korea, and today I'm going to talk about two news from IonQ's Twitter, which uh, refers to quantum computers that are being already commercially available. The first news is as follows. So, so IonQ had a tweet about their co-founder and chief scientist Chris Monroe being interviewed by this media, which uh, the hint is that quantum is involved. So let's take a look at the news. So the article's uh, title is Whatever Happened to the Business Supercomputers. So it's basically about the supercomputers and its outlook. So it once seemed inevitable that supercomputers would help businesses tackle the demands imposed by massive databases, complex engineering tools, and other processor draining challenges. Then suddenly, both technology and businesses took different course. So Chris Monroe, uh, the co-founder and the chief of chief scientist at quantum computing company IonQ, uh, offers a simple explanation for the uh, aggressive change in the interest. So supercomputers failed to catch on because they, uh, even though they have the speed and the ability to process large computational problems. They come with a significant physical footprint and a lot of it consumes a lot of electricity, which is energy, and then it also needs cooling requirements. So it doesn't meet the business overall uh, requirements, the needs. So when it comes to mainstream adoption of technologies, supercomputers never hit the right balance of affordability, size, access, and value-added enterprise use cases. So basically what Chris Mono is saying that supercomputers are not fit for the business uses. So then, so then we should ask ourselves, what is the next or new directions? So supercomputers have traditionally been di defined by the fact that they bring together a collection of parallel hardware, hardware providing a very high computational throughput and rapid interconnections but businesses don't need that for now. So this is in contrast to traditional parallel processing, where a lot of networking network servers work on a problem. Most business problems can be solved either by the latest generation of standalone processors or by parallel servers. So most businesses currently don't have the need to bring in the supercomputers because even though they have the capacity to solve complex problems, they require a lot of electricity and also physical space. And also uh, the businesses should also install additional cooling uh, devices as well. So this was mentioned by Scott Butchholz, who's the uh, CTO of Deloitte Consulting. And also the ar arrival of co cloud computing and easily accessible APIs as well as the development of private clouds and SaaS software. And uh, these kind of new technologies put high performance computing, HPC, and supercomputers in the rear view mirror. So these more affordable and also having enough cap cap uh, capability to solve business problems, these, te uh, these technologies put uh, the supercomputers away from the business's interests. So Chris Matman, who's a CTO of NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab, also said that uh, HPC supercomputers never caught up to modern day business standards. So he's basically saying the same thing as what the uh, Chris Monroe said. So what is the current adopters? We could see that from here. The sets of scientific and simulation problems that supercomputers are uniquely well suited to solving will not go away. So uh basically is saying that supercomputers are needed in case of the complex problems that the other computers cannot solve, such as weather predictions, molecular simulation, and fluid dynamics. So supercomputers are prim primarily used in areas in which sizable models are developed to predict, uh, make predictions involving vast number of measurements. So it basically means 
of very complex problems. So while uh, the supercomputers currently are located in large academic and government laboratories, uh, supercomputers have managed to find a, a milestone or, or a foothold in a few specific industry sectors such as petroleum, automotive, aerospace, chemical, and pharmaceutical enterprises. So it's not all use, useless. Uh, supercomputers' capabilities are needed in some complex problems. So while the adoption isn't necessarily widespread in scale, it does demonstrate these organizations' capacity for investments and exp experimentations of the superconducting computers. Uh, that's what Monio said. And so what's the outlook for the technology and for the business? The focus moving forward will be on new types of supercomputer architectures, which is such as neuromorphic, which uh, mimics the um, organization of human brain, and quantum computing, which is the uh, interest area of our, ourselves. That's what Madman predicts. So classical computing will simply reach a limit, Monroe observes. So Moore's law, which basically means that every 24 months, the semiconductor's performance doubles. That's what the Moore's law is. But it's, it is no longer applying to the reality. So the organizations and the business should think about or think beyond silicon. Uh, think more than current semiconductors. So Monroe adds that he's also beginning to see calls for merging supercomputers with quantum computers. So this is basically a hybrid computer architecture. And I think most of you already know that Dell is investing in, I mean, the foundation founder of Dell is investing in IonQ and also Dell industry. The Dell company is also having a partnership with IonQ of creating a hybrid uh, computational system using both classical computers and also the quantum computer. So I think that applies here as well. So eventually, however, Monroe anticipates the widespread adoption of powerful and stable quantum computers if it is developed. So IonQ might be the major player in it. So that's why I'm, I'm investing a lot in IonQ. So as uh, most of you already know, their unique computational power is better suited to solve complex and wide scale problems like financial risk management, drug discovery, microeconomic modeling, climate change, and more. So uh, the quantum computer's capability is even beyond the largest supercomputer. So while supercomputers still have a large presence for now, the top business minds, such as Goldman Sachs, Fidelity, US government, US Department of uh, Defense, and also Samsung, and all those major players out in the market, maybe SoftBank as well, are already looking toward quantum, as we already know. So this was the first news uh, introduced by IonQ's Twitter. The second news is that 71% of key decision makers at HPC, high performance computing data centers, are planning for on-premises quantum computing by 2026. So this basically means that uh, commerce commercialization of quantum computing is not decades away. It's already beginning for now. So it could be one of the evidence for that. So most HPC data centers will deploy quantum computing within the next few years. So HPC refers to high performance computing, which is the practice of aggregating compu computing power or using a super uh, computer in a way that delivers much higher performance than one could get. So it's used to solve large problems in science, engineering, or businesses. So most HPC data centers operators are expected to deploy quantum computing solutions within the next couple of years. So it's not 10 years away. It's only three to, uh, two to three years away from now. So I think after two or three years from now, uh, the quantum uh, software or quantum hardware developing firms will have a massive revenue coming in. So this was 
uh, mentioned in a new report from ATOS and IQM. ATOS is an international uh, technology service and consulting group of France, and IQM is European quantum hardware developing firm. So the firms polled 110 key decision makers from HPC centers around the world and found that getting optimal performance out of HPC while ensuring security and resilience is getting more challenging for the users. So they are moving towards quantum. So to tackle the problem, 76% of them plan on using quantum computing by just 2023. And for, furthermore, 71% plan to move to on-premises, which means installing uh, software or hardware or infrastructure within their uh, company sites, on-premises quantum computing by 2026. So quantum computing is not the case away. It's, it's coming. It's coming really fast. So three quarters, uh, over 76% of HPC centers are already using quantum computers for their servers. I think this is mentioning to the cloud service, uh, like IonQ is providing through Amazon, Google, uh, and what, what was the third one? I, I can't remember for now, but anyways, or I have plans to do so within the next two years. So they expect quantum computers to solve supply chain logistics challenges, which basically is a very challenging problem, as well as those related to climate change. So they also expect it to solve existing problems faster, so it could lead to reduced overall computing costs. So it has enough merits to move from supercomputers to quantum computing. So furthermore, the top use cases for HPC centers of quantum computing are da database searching, investment risk analysis, molecular modeling, and asset management. So the report concludes that very little is known about how quantum will work side by side with classical HPC infrastructure. So this in turn will result in uh, the growth of outsourcing operations and maintenance in quantum computing, which is basically a very great news for IonQ. And also IonQ is also, as I mentioned a minute ago, IonQ is partnering, uh, having a partnership with Dell to do this kind of uh, thing. So they're basically doing the uh, hybrid computing of classical computing with the quantum computing. So IonQ should be the major player in these two markets. So today we talked about two uh, IonQ Twitter introduced news, which basically uh, addresses the quantum computers are already commercially available. So thanks for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. All right, so I'll see you guys in the next video.